All right, students, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at species conservation. These slides will help you understand causes of biodiversity loss, benefits of biodiversity, conservation biology, and island, bio, island biogeography theory, and conservation efforts. Let's first take a look at biodiversity loss and species extinction. Extinction means the last member of a species dies and the species vanishes forever from Earth. A sad situation. Extirpation is a little bit less um, morose. It means the disappearance of a particular population, but not the entire species globally. So it is disappearing from only one location. And these are natural processes. On average, one species goes extinct every 500 to 1,000 years, and this is the background rate of extinction. 99% of all species that ever lived are now extinct, according to geological evidence, or I could say archaeological evidence. All right, let's take a look at mass extinctions. This um, should remind you of the history of life assignment that you did. Earth has experienced five mass extinction events in which over half of its species were wiped out suddenly. And again, we see this in the geological um, in the geological record, looking at different layers of rock within the Earth. As we go deeper into the Earth, we're looking at rock that is older, and so we study the fossil evidence left there. Um, the one that we are most familiar with, well, here's a, a list of them, but the one that's most commonly referred to is the KT extinction, 65 million years ago which is thought to be due to an asteroid impact that wiped out the dinosaurs. This is today's mass extinction. I put today's in parentheses because, I mean in quotation marks, because we're looking at the era of the, the human. So even going back 30,000 years ago, we can see that there was a big drop in the large mammals in Eurasia. Other ones on North America, 10,000 years ago, a loss of 72% of those large mammals. And all these different areas throughout the world, with the presence of human hunting, we, saw, we see a large drop in the number of large mammals. So we are saying in this case that it's likely due to overhunting. But today, when I, when I truly say today, right now, Earth is undergoing its sixth mass extinction because of us. And not just because of hunting. But humans have increased the extinction rate by a factor of a thousand more than the background rate. That's a huge factor. More than a thousand and one hundred species are known to have gone extinct in the past 400 years. We'll take a look at some pretty awesome examples, even just from the past hundred years. And just FYI, you don't have to know this term, but the red list from the International Union for the Conservation of Nature the species that today are facing high risk of extinction, including 23% of mammal species. What are the causes for this? Number one, habitat alteration. It is the greatest cause of extinction today. It accounts for about 85% of population declines of birds and mammals. Habitat change hurts most organisms because they are adapted to an existing habitat. So how do we alter habitats? Well, one way is by forest clearing. Through agriculture, we clear um, an area and grow crops. Urban development, we see that around us all the time, especially areas like LA. And global climate change, that's a big one. That's sort of the, the silent killer. We'll take a look at that in a little bit in more detail. Also, invasive species, number two as a cause. Accidental or intentional introduction of exotic species to new areas. Most of, these invade, most of these introduced species do not establish or expand. Maybe it's just not the right niche for them, but some do, and likely because they are released from limitations imposed by their native predators, parasites, and competitors. Release meaning they're in a new area where we don't have those predators, those parasites, and competitors, so they are free to fill that niche more fully. In today's globalizing world, invasive species have become perhaps the second worst threat to native biota, biota being a term that includes all living things. We've seen many examples of invasive species in class. There's a couple of good tables in your book that have some more examples. Third cause here is pollution. And um, air and water pollution, agricultural runoff. We talked about the nitrification, well, the eutrophication of waters due to excessive nitrates and phosphates. 
that um, that can create biodiversity loss, as we see in the areas um, near the coast that become dead, dead zones. Industrial chemicals also can have a disastrous effect on amphibians, which um, are used to being in water. They have a very, um, a very, a very, very um, permeable skin to um, to things that are dissolved in water. So pollutants can go through their skin very easily. And we also see air pollution, which um, we know can affect bird populations. And uh, when we had the pesticide DDT, that was greatly affecting the bird populations, especially affecting the condor. Pollution does serious and widespread harm, but it is not as threatening as other elements of biodiversity loss. In other words, habitat destruction, invasive species, and climate change are seen as more important. Overharvesting can also pose a threat of extinction. And um, this is, again, not as major, although it definitely affects large mammals. And uh, here we can see tiger parts from Siberian tigers at a Chinese marketplace. And these tigers have become threatened by loss of habitat and also overhunting. So climate change. Emissions of the greenhouse gases are causing temperatures to warm worldwide. Greenhouse gases being CO2, um, uh, methane, NO2 is also a greenhouse gas. And this increases the frequency of extreme weather events. Thus, global climate change could become, or might currently be, the fifth cause of extinctions. And what kind of, what kind of examples can we th think of here? Mountaintop organisms, they can't climb any higher to get to colder temperatures, and so they would just end up dying off. Or tree populations, they can't move forward fast enough. Tree populations, you know, trees don't move, they don't walk, but they spread their seeds. So a tree population can spread, can, um, can migrate over generations. But this takes time, and if the climate is changing too fast, they're not going to keep up. Communities can also shift. You can have new prey and predators and parasites. In other words, those organisms that can migrate as temperatures and weather patterns shift, they will be going into a new area where they are basically being, being introduced species, non-native species. And from that, you get whole different um, types of community interactions. All five causes are influenced by human population growth and rising consumption, and that's an important point. What are some benefits of biodiversity? We'll take a look at these in the next slide. We'll call that part B coming up.